Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Bigness Mind series. I read an interesting quote by Paulo Coelho in his famous book called The Alchemist, where he wrote, The secret of life. The secret of life is to fall seven times and get up eight times. Our special guest today is an expert on helping you do just that, on helping you bounce back after setbacks and disappointments. Mr. Anthony Brinkley is an established leadership expert, author, resilience training coach, and a change agent. He's the CEO of On The Brink Consulting, a leadership development firm providing expert resilience training, motivational speaking, and team building. Prior to starting his firm, he was the Command Chief Master Sergeant for the 11th, uh, 11th Wing of Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. Some highlights from his um, esteemed 28 years of military experience. Anthony Brinkley obtained Chief Master Sergeant Distinction, a leadership position achieved by only 1% of the enlisted Air Force. He has managed over 130,000 people and provided oversight for more than $3 billion worth of aviation assets in over 14 bases across the world, to include Korea, Turkey, and the Philippines. Anthony has also led a contingent of aviators, maintenance personnel, and support troops during Operation Desert Fox, where his unit flew more than 200 combat missions. And he has provided support for, excuse me, President Obama, President Joe Biden, and former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice in his distinguished career. Please join me in welcoming the maestro of resilience training, Mr. Anthony Brinkley. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure us. to be here. It is Thank an you. immense pleasure, my friend. Likewise, likewise. I, I would like to, um, you know, sort of divide our uh, virtual chat here today, Anthony, in two segments. Part one, I wanted to talk about resilience, and that has been the subject of your training and the subject of your research and experience for, for a long time. And then part two, we move on to uh, leadership, both self-leadership and leading others. Um, I just want to start with a simple question, because you're doing a lot of training around resilience, and you've picked, this is your niche segment here. What does it mean in your perspective to be resilient? Is this a trait that we are all born with or do we acquire it along the way? I believe that there are elements of resilience that are baked in all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think what ends up happening is, um, like a lot of people say, resilience is about bouncing back. And what I tell people is it's good to bounce back to where you are, but really what resilience is about is bouncing forward because right. what ends up happening is you extract the lessons from that thing that may have caused you to have a setback. So mm -hmm. although there, there may be things intrinsically in you that give you the ability to be resilient, resilient, if you don't exercise the muscle, develop a muscle memory, or you don't exercise elements that help you extract lessons. You mm -hmm. know, like I tell people in life, what you don't repair, you end up repeating. So oh, wow. for me, re resilience is a skill set that has to be developed. It has to be cultivated. And it's truly, it's truly, you don't really understand if you have resilience until you, until you have the test. And mm -hmm. as we've heard it said many times, without a test, there is no testimony. And you, mm -hmm. my friend, are a, a, a shining example of a, a testimony of someone who took something and they, they knew there was something innately inside of them and, they, and you changed, you pivoted. And most people, I, I don't, they have the ability to pivot, but most people don't. So I try to encourage people to, to pivot, to, to pull, and then look for examples around you to become more resilient. So well said. So so as I understand, it's not only about bouncing back from a setback, but also pushing yourself to higher levels of uh, performance. It's also putting into action those wonderful ideas and insights that we all have, but we don't follow through for the lack of, um, you know, not having developed that muscle. Um, you know, I read this interesting quote by Emperor Marcus Aurelius. He has a book called, titled uh, The Meditations, uh, ancient wisdom there from the Roman emperor, who said, if you are pained by external things, it is not that they disturb you, but your own judgment of them. And it is in your power to wipe that judgment out now. So a profound thought there that if whatever the challenges we perceive is not only, um, they're not only, they, they exist to the limit we allow them to occupy our mind. And it's in our power whether we give them permission to do that or not, and rightly said uh, what you said about resilience. That if you don't allow, if you don't develop that muscle, it never kicks into action. Uh, any tips, uh, Anthony, on on how our viewers, especially young people, can have more of this uh, personality trait, more more resilience? 
So I'll, I'll frame it this way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the the Bible says it, it says um, where there's no vision, people perish. Right. It didn't say where there's no sight. Mm -hmm. uh, where most people get in trouble is they function on sight. Sight is mm -hmm. based on sensory elements. What you mm -hmm. sell, you see, smell, feel, and all those things. But more in intently, sight is based on your experiences. So from an experiential standpoint, you start to develop a cultivated mindset to say, I can do this. These opportunities are open to me. These opportunities aren't open to me. So mm -hmm. to me, um, when you when you function on sight, you 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 give away too much to the external. So sure. I, a person without sight can actually lead people because they have vision, which mm -hmm. is inside of them that they're taking time to still their mind to, right. to hear that voice that will guide them, irrespective of them having sight or not. So I tell people the first thing is, you know, the odds of being born is one in four hundred trillion. True. So you just being born, you hit the lottery in life. Is so a miracle. Don't let someone. Mm -hmm. And I also tell people, don't let someone who don't ha who does not have sight proofread mm -hmm. your vision for life. Oh so wow! Again, that deserves a round of applause. Sight. It doesn't. Don't let someone who doesn't have vision proofread your life. Okay. Right. So, so for me, simply stated, I challenge you not to function on sight. I I challenge you to function on vision. Because vision will cause you to walk beyond what you can naturally see, but it, mm -hmm. vision will never lead you wrong. As you said with you know, the alchemist, when you, mm -hmm. when as Paul Coelho put, um, when you try to do things the correct way, the universe conspires to work yeah. with you. Does indeed. It does indeed. And that's emerging from the internal vision. And um, I love what you said about if we just trust eyesight, we see things as they are, right? It's vision that helps you see as they should be, as you want them to be, as your life could be. And you have to develop the courage to slowly follow this vision. I think uh, what's personally helped me a lot, Anthony, was following all these crazy ideas, you know, going on this different career trajectory and then relocating back home after spending time in five different countries and changing my career. The one thing that really helped me was take it. You don't have to figure out the entire staircase on the entire way how you're going to get there just take it one or two steps at a time one or two steps at a time that's really worked for me you know I, i'll say this real quickly there, there's mm -hmm. an old um, it was a sitcom in america called the little rascals these little kids would always come up with these little games and stuff and there was a mm -hmm. little boy that was in the house he was sick and his parents told him if he went outside to play he would get ill uh, he'd be exposed to things that would harm his health so one of the kids snuck in the house and say, look, come out. I'm telling you, you won't get sick. You'll have a great time. So they created this little cart and they were going down this hill and they were flying down the hill fast and they tried to hit the brakes and the brakes didn't work. And so the little kid who had been in the house and he was like, wait a minute, the brakes don't work. And he asked the kid, Stymie, who was, was in the cart driving, he mm -hmm. said, Stymie, where are we going? And right. Stymie said to the kid, I don't know where we're going, but we're <laughs> on our way. Right. And, and so a lot of times <laughs> in life, Life is, you don't really know where you're going, but if you're principled and you're disciplined like you have been, and mm -hmm. you're focused on those things that affirm life, you don't really know where you're going, but you know it's going to lead you to a great place. And the ride is the spice and the essence of everything that you do. Indeed. Uh, the I think your values, as you, as you said, serve as a moral compass. You know, when you're off, when you feel that, you feel that internal, um, I think psychologists call it cognitive dissonance. You feel that internal mm -hmm. discomfort if you're going off track. Um, and this is something that I urge all uh, viewers, and especially our young viewers, to do this exercise. Um, spend some time on visualizing how your ideal self, you know, who would you like to be five years from now if you, if you play your cards right? Um, and then spend some time on figure, uh, reflecting on who you are at the moment and the gap in between. Nobody knows that gap, nobody but you. And that is the root cause of the lack of all self-confidence because the imposter syndrome or whatever, it's all emerging from there because you know there's a gap. And the more you're able to close it, the more sure you feel about yourself and you're able to serve the world in a better way. I, I couldn't agree more. I use three words. I say the mm -hmm. first thing when, when, a, when a person wants to move forward in life, the first thing is reflection. Reflection mm -hmm. is simply acknowledging the terrain that you're operating on. Reflection is acknowledging your circumstances. So once you give yourself a, a true assessment, then the next right. step is introspection. How do I feel about where I am? How do I feel about my environment? How do uh -huh. I feel about my circumstances? And then interest after introspection becomes the part where most people don't go. It is correction. What am I right. willing to do about it? Am I going to spend time toiling in 
what happened and what some people people said to me. I put it to people like this. Mm-hmm. Those that you let define you, you let confine you. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I I, I, I don't allow anyone to, to, to define me. Um, I will learn from you. I have learned from you already just watching what you've done. And so there Thank are you. elements that I can extract, but I can never do it to the degree that you're doing it because you're uniquely configured to do it. So to me, how do I learn? In, from an introspective way, and am I courageous and bold enough to move out and, mm-hmm. and, and put all the noise out of my head so I could just hear that voice that guides me? And you're doing it in your own remarkable way. You know, I saw some of your videos as well. Great energy. You come with rich experience, firsthand leadership experience. Someone like me might be talking about a lot of things from an academic perspective, but you're talking more from an operational real life experience. So you're serving, you're adding value. I've seen your videos. I've read your website and uh, all about you, about your mission as well. And it's a great example that you did not. I was talking to someone uh, this morning about retirement. And I happen to make the statement that retirement is an industrial age concept that we need to do away with, right? Is what because they came up with it, the factory system. You work from this, you know, you start at 18 and you retire at it's 58 in the Indian subcontinent. I don't know in the in the U.S. Army, what, what, what's like the threshold? When do you retire? Um, you you could be around 50 somewhere. Around like 50, that. typical, right? And then you have to. A lot of people find themselves lost after that. But if you find a mission. And I think young or old, Indian or American, or wherever you happen to be, there's one force called discovering a mission for yourself is going to transform you. It has transformed me, Anthony, discovering that I had a gift that through the power of my voice, through the power of my ideas, I could serve and uplift. And uh, whoever's tuning in right now, I think if you, if you spend time figuring out doing these two things, what are my gifts? And how can I use to serve the world, use my gifts to serve the world? You will forever rise above the concept of retirement uh, because life is going to be like a joy ride. Your thoughts? Well, let me offer, let me offer this to you for, for your audience's consideration. Mm-hmm. I remember I remember um, when I got out of the military and and then they said, well, he's retired. And the way the, the way that they said it, it almost sounded like they said, like, he's dead. Mm-hmm. You know, like with, <laughs> to me. If you look at anyone who you've admired and had and and, and, and embraced that mission mindset mm-hmm. associated with purpose, they there to me there's no such thing as retirement. When you shift into something else, you continue to walk in your purpose. So here's mm-hmm. the analogy that I use: If mm-hmm. you look at a tree, a tree has fruit on the tree, and then there are seasons for that tree where the, the, there isn't fruit on the tree, but the tree isn't dead. The tree is, is germinating. It might be in a dormant state. But, right. but but the reason the tree can continue to survive is because the fruit on the tree doesn't belong to the tree. Oh, wow. The fruit on the tree supports the ecosystem around the tree. So mm-hmm. although a tree can survive without producing fruit, it's mm-hmm. not serving its purpose. So right. to me, if you can't if you can't play in the game like you used to play because you've gotten older, then your job as a person who is a fruit bearer is to coach those who continue to be in the game. So to all of your listeners, all you have to do is look at this man, this host who who walked away from a, a career that was that was stable, that was consistent, and in most people's eyes, in most people's sight. He was being highly successful, but he realized that it's not about success. It's about significance because significance is about the fruit that you bear for other people. So I challenge all of you. See, my life is to take people's excuse away because when I was five years old, I was going mm-hmm. through chemotherapy. I was mm-hmm. in the hospital for six months. I was separate. I was suffering from separation anxiety. I saw a kid get killed in front of me in the first grade. I had a gun pulled on me in the first grade. I used mm-hmm. to walk home and pack some school in the first grade because a lot of children were being molested and I wanted to give up on my life. So I'm not trying to come here as an accomplished individual. I'm coming here as a person who had dreams before life kicked me in the stomach and I had to go back and reset. So I'm telling you, I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what you've gone through. If you're still here, that means you're a survivor. That means you can thrive and you can turn your pain to purpose. So I challenge you this day, from one side of the world to the other, two men trying to tell you that we're no better than you, but we just want you to know that when you when you bear your gift and you take your, your gifts through that birth canal called life, which is painful, on the other mm-hmm. side of it is going to be other people's restoration and redemption. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. 
and I can feel it. It's coming straight from the heart, straight from the gut, and I hope um, that's where it ends up. That's where it ends up in the hearts of our listeners and viewers because, um, you know, what you've been through, what you just said, I think um, uh, those are huge challenges and to rebuild your life. What I see is these days sometimes we lose that sense of perspective. What, what I mean is we, we have the tiniest of things going wrong and maybe the internet not working on a certain day or something else going wrong, um, which is uh, we can very easily find a solution to that and we blow it out of proportion. Um, and um, you've been through so much and to rebuild your life and then that in itself is um, a testimony to the fact that no matter what happens to you, it's how you respond that's more important. It's how you respond. Because like uh, I like one of your videos where you, where you talked about choose your heart. Speak to us about that, please. Choosing your heart. So, so in life, um, you know, like in America, we have this company where you buy office supplies, and they they have this thing in there where it's an easy button. And, you okay. know, and I said, you know, that that's just a myth. There mm -hmm. is no easy button in life. <laughs> so, to me, um, to get to where you're going to go in life, you're going to be faced with challenges. So, sure. when a challenge faces you, you have you pick your heart. And so, one heart is if I don't change what I'm doing. This problem starts hard, it remains hard, and it may even mm -hmm. get more difficult. Mm -hmm. If you choose the other hard where I'm going to face what I'm doing introspectively and make the, the changes, it starts hard, but it actually right. gets easier as you go forward. So mm -hmm. for even for me, my life started hard and I started to journal. I want to encourage some of your um, your listeners to, right. to, if you're having a problem, sometimes take the time to journal because when you can get that stuff outside of you, it doesn't change the problem, but it changes you because sometimes we walk around with stuff on the inside. So mm -hmm. it's marinating and we don't have the ability to look at it objectively. So you write sure. it down and then, you, and then you take a step back and look at that same problem and you could be prescriptive in helping you. So again, the, the short answer is when you choose your heart, if you stay uh -huh. where you are, it remains hard. If you choose the heart to dig in, to put your toes in the ground. And sometimes that means you have to ask other people for help whether right. spiritually, mentally, materially, mm -hmm. then it starts hard, but it gets easier. Look at this man who has an international platform um, that comes from a country of, of just so many people. And, 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 and so every time someone from India comes to another country, every time they get there, they make that country better. So I'm like, what the heck is going on in India? <laughs> and, 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 I, right. and, and I know that there are challenges in India, but... You, you are an example of a person who chose hard. So listen, folks, this is not about us other than us using our circumstances to encourage you. Thank you so much. And I'm sure this means a lot to our viewers. We have a hunger of, uh, you know, achievement. Uh, and I was talking to another guest uh, this morning and we spoke about that, how especially the youngsters, they're so optimistic, despite we have our own set of challenges, just like any other, other country does, but there is hope and optimism. And what I feel, whether it's India or United States, we need role models more than ever before. We need people who've been there, done that, who've made some mistakes, who've figured out the some of the challenges, and then to offer it to the uh, to others who probably do not have access to this information. Just like what you said about the tree bearing the fruit, and I'm reminded about choosing your heart. You know, I did one video, um, Anthony, when when I first landed up in Sydney, Australia, as a young student in 1999. One of the first jobs that I did for two weeks was washing cars, washing cars. Now. Uh, it, it, not, I mean, I really enjoyed it. It's been part of my memory, my journey. It built up my muscle to make the best of whatever's available. But my parents could have very well afforded to send me the, my living expenses as well as my international tuition fee, and I could have just not done anything and still graduated and focused all my attention on studies instead of making this part-time job. But I saw some of my friends doing it. And I thought to myself, here's my chance to earn my own money, to be independent, and to see what this feels like. So I said, sign me up. I'm coming in for this job of 15 days of working at this car wash. And what it did was it built that self-confidence inside me that I can face these situations. I can, uh, you know, it, it, I can look after myself, my financial needs. And at 17, 18 or 19, I think at that point of time, have this realization that I could be financially independent. Um, and that gave me a lot of self-confidence. There are things in life that you must do I, my must do was to show up at the university every day for which my parents had already paid for. And the things that we choose to do, working at 15 days on this car wash was something that I choose to do. I didn't have to do it. And the second category, I believe, 
makes a huge difference in your outlook and your resilience and your confidence. What are your thoughts on this, uh, Anthony? Um, my, my thoughts on it is, is what you said. I, I think, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll answer it a slightly different way, if, mm -hmm. if you allow me. Um, so the Please. average person in America, and I would, I would suggest maybe even in your country, but I know in America, the average person spends about six and a half hours every day on a computer. Mm. And um, so that's thousands of hours over the year. And only about 25 percent of what they look at is positive. Mm -hmm. So to me, so I, when I teach people and I train them, I, I give them three words. It's called guard your gates, your okay. gates to your eyes. What do you allow into your eyes? Your mm -hmm. gates to your ears. What are you consuming? Um, because what goes into your ears can go into your heart. And then Indeed. your gates are your spirit, you know, is your uh -huh. spirit. So, yep. so if if, six, if, if, if if a preponderance of what we see online is right. negative and it, it continues to reaffirm, let someone validate you, let someone mm -hmm. affirm you, let someone tell you what your value and worth is, you're mm -hmm. gonna you're gonna be despondent, you're gonna be down, and you're gonna you're gonna you're not gonna be self regulating. So platforms like yours, that's why when I had the opportunity, and I've done my research on you, when I had the opportunity to affiliate myself with the platform that encourages people and inspires people to protect their gates and stuff yeah. that's value added. Uh, in my country, every day, 7,000 people die. So right. 7,000 people who woke up this morning will not get through the rest of this day. Mm -hmm. As your mm -hmm. listeners listen to this right now, by the mm -hmm. time this, this this session is over, you and I, when people look at, there will be people who will not get through this session as mm -hmm. far, in your country as, mm -hmm. as far as, as the time goes. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that to say, um, when you when you when you have that must do and that what you choose to do, I tell people choose life because this is so finite. It is so fleeting. We will never be as young as we are right now. So if Indeed. you knew this was your last week on this earth, what would you do? And what's the thing that you regret not doing? And right. I say that to say, what's the worst thing that can happen? When I started my business, they said, what do you know about business? I said, 80 percent of people in America that, that mm -hmm. teach business school never had a business. <laughs> they talk about theory. They talk right. about how to do. They don't know what it's like to have doubt or they don't know what it's like to have. They know they're getting their check every week by, by telling people stuff, but that they've never done. So the first right. thing I know is they've never done what I've done. The second thing I know about business is I know what peanut butter and jelly tastes like. What's mm -hmm. that got to do with it? If, if it doesn't work, I can live like I used to live. But what if it does work? And mm -hmm. you quit a job after working there for a while in the industry and in Great Britain. And then you decide to become an international person, not to be famous, not to be rich, but to have an impact and tell everybody you have no excuse because you're the most qualified person to be spectacular in being you. And you get to define what that looks like. And that is powerful. That is so powerful. I think Marianne Williamson, she said it beautifully. You're a child of God. And just like everybody else, you'd have as much a right to shine in all your brilliance and all your glory. Right. So don't um, I think she said something like this. Uh, don't hide just to make other people feel comfortable. Don't hide your brilliance. Right. Um, Jim Carrey said, risk being seen in all your glory. And I think that is a risk yes. worthwhile taking, risk being seen in all your glory. That's how you overcome these self-doubts, this imposter syndrome. Um, again, referring back to the passage from Marianne Williamson and the Course in Miracles, she said, we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, talented, gorgeous, and fabulous? And the counter question to that in that passage is, who are you not to be? You're a child of God. Who are you not to be? So we need to tap into that inner power once again. What drew you, Anthony, specifically to resilience training? What, were there certain life experiences? Because this is a niche segment in terms of the tons of different segments we have out there in leadership training. Uh, resilience training is a niche. Uh, how did you come across this? What sort of experiences prompted you to go in this direction? It was actually my life. Um, mm. When I was five years old, my brother would tell you, I had a dream. I said I was going to travel the world and help people. When you're mm -hmm. five years old, you don't know about money. You don't know about fame. You don't know right. about recognition. There's mm -hmm. a thing inside of you. And around that age, that's when you start to say things like people are good, people are bad. I can trust people. You know, yeah. between five and seven, from an intellectual, emotional intelligence standpoint, you kind of formulate. So right after I, I had aspirations, that's when I became ill and I was going through chemo and all the things mm -hmm. I suggested had a, mm -hmm. a myriad of life experiences and then i became performance based as you talked about 
I became right. the imposter because 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 I had abandonment issues and separation anxiety and other psychological things that I was right. that I hadn't dealt with, and mm -hmm. I didn't have the maturity to deal with it. So I tried to receive uh, accolades and compensation and validation through accomplishments, but I read I, I realized that they rang hollow. So mm -hmm. I started journaling, and my journal turned into a best-selling book in America. It was the number one best-selling book. And I didn't write the book to be a bestseller. Mm -hmm. I wrote the book because I had to get stuff off of my mind. And mm -hmm. so one of the things to your question specifically I learned in this process to me is if things go well in your life uh, or things don't go well, however it goes, it will never be the product that you have. If you're not successful in life, it will never be the product because if you say it's the product, that means that God gave you something inefficient. He gave mm -hmm. you something that didn't that did lack sufficiency. He gave you something that was incomplete. That's why right. you can see a person that might have a, a limb missing or something, but they're you know they're doing dynamic things because they're fully equipped for what they're supposed to do. So I right. tell your listeners this: if you're not if you don't reach your goals in life, it will never be because you're ill-equipped. It will never be the product. It will be the process. Mm -hmm. You see, if some people don't want to work their process, your process right. might be you're not you're not uh, you're not intelligent enough. You haven't educated yourself enough in this area. It doesn't mean you lack the intelligence. It means right. you lack knowledge. So you have to get the knowledge. The process could be you got to get more patience. The process could be you got to learn how to work to people. But you you have everyone on this call is fully equipped to do what they do. They they fully they have a fully functioning product. But you mm -hmm. have to you have to work your process. So resilience became my pain became the birth canal for my my curriculum that's helped mm -hmm. people around the world because pain can project or mm -hmm. or it can transmit and if right. you project your pain on people then they're you know they're feeling those negative things but if you transmit it it will transform you into something better so don't let don't let pain project let it transmit to a place where you learn don't don't let it project let it transmit transmit to a place where you can learn and help you transform your life and transform others uh, i read this somewhere hurt people hurt other people uh, people, right? So if you, if you don't look exactly. after your pain, that should be one of our highest um, priorities is to heal ourselves. And some of us, um, sadly, Anthony, in my experience, a lot of people wait wait for somebody else to come and rescue uh, me. You know, somebody else would say something that should soothe me right now or heal me or heal this pain. While the truth is, um, then they might never just show up or they might not be equipped to heal you or might not be able to say the, those things that you need to listen to in order to bounce back. So why not take charge? of that process yourself and heal yourself so that you don't end up wounding other people. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I'd like to now move this conversation a little bit to your leadership experience. Um, you've had an extensive uh, military experience and you're now in training. You train corporations, governments, military, as well as uh, nonprofits. If you were to pick the top three leadership traits that everyone should aim at developing, um, and I'm sure this is going to be a slightly difficult one to pick out of the uh, so many things that we all love about leadership. What are the top three traits you feel everyone should develop in order to be a good leader? Uh, one, I would say to be open and candid. So openness mm -hmm. and candor, because when you're open with people, especially in a leadership position, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're a busy person or you have a lot going on. So if, if you don't avail yourself to people, then what ends up happening is you create separation because people say they're too busy or they seem to be um, di distracted of requirements. So when you become an open person, a person right. who reaches out, a person mm -hmm. who tries to bring people in, and then when you do that, you have true connection. I tell people, it, you know, you create intimate connections, intimacy into me see. Mm -hmm. so, so when I talk to people about intimacy through openness and candor, that's where connection takes place. So I think that's the one because that establishes the foundation for the mm -hmm. relationship. People talk mm -hmm. about these other, you know, prominent elements, but mm -hmm. until we connect, then we right. can't really get to a depth. So that's and one I openness and candor. Two is uh, you have to have a level of integrity. And uh, a lot of times that's why a lot of clients I don't work with because they say we can make money, but I question their character. So mm -hmm. I don't want to make money with people or, or have an established relationship with people I, who sure. I can't trust. What they're mm -hmm. doing when I don't see them. Mm -hmm. So to me, you've heard this said many times: your character and integrity is what you do when people don't see you. And no one's um, watching you. So yeah. For me, mm -hmm. um, you know, you fight. You fight the impulse to take the easy path. Mm -hmm. uh, like we said, choosing your heart. So I would say integrity is one mm -hmm. of those things that you carry with you. It precedes you everywhere you go. 
And then lastly, um, you have to have heart and passion because mm -hmm. heart, heart is where empathy rests. Right. Heart is the seat of your emotions. The heart is the seat of your experiences. Heart tells you, like when we talk about diversity, diversity is not having one person from India, one person from American, one Hispanic, one Hindu, one Buddhist. It's 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 not about having one of each. It's about mm -hmm. perspective. Indeed. So when I have heart, it, it challenges me to figure out why you see things the way you do. When I right. have heart, even if I don't agree with what you're saying, it challenges me to try to understand why you feel so passionate. Uh -huh. So passion, so heart will keep you moving when things get hard because mm -hmm. invariably they're going to be challenged in life. So I'd say if we're open, we have candor, we have integrity and we have heart because heart says, um, I'm not committed. I I'll tell you a quick story. So a friend of mine, sure. his mother had four miscarriages, four okay. times. Not only did she have miscarriages, she took four children to full term, which means she carried four times four children and they all died. They wrote um, dead upon birth. So she was pregnant with my friend whose name is Lefford Fate. He, he does what I do. And when she was pregnant with the fifth child, people told her, their site said, anything that you birth will not be good. You don't have good ground. They, they encouraged her to, to, to get rid of her child. And she says, no, God will not allow me to get to this point. I don't know why this happened to me four times. Mm -hmm. And and she had it. So the odds of being born in a good circumstance is one in 400 trillion. Mm -hmm. She had four, she lost four children at, at the nine month mark and she had him. And this guy now travels the world. He helps wow. people and he talks wow. about no matter what might have come out of something that seemed like it was dead ground, mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. passion and her heart says, I'm going to push this thing through. And I mm -hmm. tell you, my brother, that's what you did. I got goosebumps talking right now because it's so easy for someone to stay where they are. Hey, this job is safe. Hey, this job is, it, it keeps, gives me security. But that thing is crying inside of you saying, there's a mm -hmm. part of you that's dying every day and you have to fight for the life in you because your fruit is not for you. And that's what she did for this young man. And now he's changing lives all over the world, just like you. Wow, that's fantastic. What a story. So openness. And, and you've demonstrated that, sir. You've dem demonstrated that by accepting this uh, invitation and being here today. A lot of people, some, some of the people that we approach get all very suspicious about, you know, being on a, a talk show, how, how's it going to be? And, you know, should I be sharing what I have to say on, et cetera? Uh, so openness, for, first trade. And I think with openness also comes humility. The, hum the ability to listen to another perspective without necessarily jumping to conclusions. Integrity, you mentioned, was your second one, and that's huge because, uh, as you mentioned, your refusal to work with certain clients, there are certain areas where we, me and my team, we are absolutely clear that th these segments, you know, get-rich-quick schemes and multi-level multi marketing, some pyramid schemes, et cetera, et cetera, where we could easily, if we step into those and make money off people, we could make a lot of money, but we will compromise our values and the foundation of what we built. So integrity is huge for us as well. I love the three that you gave, openness, integrity, and having a heart. It's not all about rules, procedures, and systems. It's also about emotions and people because that's who we are working with at the end of the day. I got a friend. I just mm -hmm. met a new friend. I'm, I'm looking at him right now. <laughs> um, Thank you. Likewise. Spirit, what people don't understand is, do you realize that your spirit doesn't get older? That's why like, I, I'll be 57 this year. And I went to my high school reunion a while back. And so although I don't move like I used to with the smoothness and alacrity and all of that, but mm -hmm. now, so, so, you know, you sit there, you start telling stories and you hear a song that, that took you back to school and you want to get up and dance and you start, you know, mimicking things you used to do. It's because even though your body from a physiological standpoint gets older, the thing that makes you who you are, that God gave your spirit, your uh -huh. spirit doesn't age. And some of you out Absolutely. there have allowed yourself to get old allowed yourself to kind of stop, just slow down in your process. And your spirit is saying, no, mm -hmm. no, fight, stand, push. And everything you put your hand on, you dominate. Because we're supposed to have dominion on this earth to leave this earth better than we found it. So you have helped jumpstart my spirit by being a part of this. I, I'm just hoping that we continue this discussion because I'm learning. You may not be getting anything from me, oh, but I I'm like all your audience members. I'm getting so much from you. So again, everybody, if you allowed your spirit or you have people that speaking into your life and, and, and they're taught cause you to be down, remember this in life. 
to fully bloom, you have to fully prune. And pruning wow. means you got to cut stuff off. Mm -hmm. So look, look at what we need to prune. To fully bloom, you have to prune, which means to let go of things which are not serving you. And, um, um, you know, th thank you about bringing that up about spirits. I think it's a famous uh, Sufi master, Rumi, who said um, people don't just like each other when they meet. Uh, they, it, it's the vibrations uh, that play a huge role. They're thinking the same thing. The mission is that the similarities have been there long before. And then they meet. And I, I urge every audience member to think about the power of collaboration to think beyond yourself, to think beyond borders, to think beyond race, color, language, nationality, ethnicity, religion, and explore similarities. You know, that's how we can have more peace in the world. Explore similarities. See that we're all coming from the probably more or less the same challenges, you know, uh, different geographies perhaps, but the challenges remain the same, more or less the same aspirations. And um, we need to discover what is common so that we can find common ground and add value to each other. What a beautiful planet this would be if we all could look from you know, that perspective. You know, it's funny. There's an African proverb that says, when the elephants are fighting, the ants suffer. Mm -hmm. and, and we have some elephants a handful of people in our world mm -hmm. that have, I don't think have the best intent, but they have the ability to influence a lot. All you yeah. have to do is turn on the news. And, and and so for me, as long as we stay where we are and we don't collaborate, nothing yeah. changes. Right. So, so my challenge, I tell people like this, we're all spiritual beings having an earthly experience. Mm -hmm. And when you mm -hmm. acknowledge the spirituality that lives within you, as you said, in, in regards to connection, Mm -hmm. then we have access to infinite wisdom when we acknowledge who created us, Indeed. what created us. So mm -hmm. there's nothing, even in what's going on in our world, we can speak life, we can change those things if we if we connect to that essence that makes us who we are. From thousands of miles away, our spirits are joined in a unified effort to make things better. And light casts out darkness. So mm -hmm. we're going to be light as long as we can in this form. And when, they, when we put these bodies down, then we live in a different form. So let's be spiritual. Be we're not earthly people just living. No, we're mm -hmm. spiritual beings that came from beyond, that will live beyond. And our whole purpose is to determine where people go next. So mm -hmm. let's help them get there. Despite That's why we had the challenges that we have. For those of you that have greatness in you, which is all of you, this mm -hmm. man here, He's a prime example. The world wanted him to settle. That's why they give you just enough to keep you coming back. But your spirit says no. Because more. this period is about what happens next. You are a spiritual being having an earthly experience. So dominate your earthly experience. Change life and be a fruit bearer with your heart, through your heart, through your integrity, by connection. And, and and just uh, understand that that the spiritual source is inexhaustible. That you know, in our physical capacity, we try to do something, move something, achieve something, and we are so small, so insignificant. But once we um, make contact with the spirit, and once we allow um, the so many things have manifested in my life from that perspective. So many things that wouldn't have otherwise if I would have tried. Uh, you know, um, what they call the hustle, or you know, the, try to be. I can make it happen. That's the biggest misconception. You're an instrument. That's what we need to remind ourselves. I'm an instrument to make it happen. There's something else operating. And the moment that I surrender to that divine force, to that higher force, and align my... I love what you said earlier about um, guarding your gates. And I think in the information-rich era, that is something that should be the, on the priority of everyone. Guard your gates from all the nonsense that circulates on social media, which sells precisely because it's negative. Because we are more prone to sharing negative stuff because it catches everybody's attention, right? So, and that's what we feed on. And imagine, you, I was in uh, Vegas um, 2018 presenting to a conference. Um, it was called Ideas America, speaking on innovation. And then I went to um, one of the famous uh, Vegas buffets, right? And mm -hmm. uh, it just occurred to me in the observation that how selective we are, what we go back for, for another helping. I'm only going back for the stuff that I like or stuff that I think is healthy, right? I'm very selective about what I want to eat from an option of maybe 200 dishes out there. And we are not selective about what we talk about, what we focus on, what we think about, conversations we have, people we spend time with, and books that we read. We're not selective. We just don't guard our gates, as you said before. What I would suggest to all your listeners 
Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe this page that he has, this channel that he has, because it's so much garbage out there. Like you said, the buffet. And what happens when you when you overindulge? You you wake up the next day with a hangover. You right. bloat it. Mm -hmm. And so now, because of your lack of discipline, it's affected the next day. And it's not only affected the next day, it's infected the mm -hmm. next day. Mm -hmm. So so to me, um, if you're getting something out of this, I know I am. This is the kind of stuff you need. And, and when you get something that's good, this is where we get in trouble. We get all we can, we can right. all we get, and then we sit on the can. Mm -hmm. No, you need to share the goodness <laughs> right. with other people. If you yep. got somebody going through something, tell them to listen to this. Tell them to follow this man. I'm amped up. I'm like, where has this guy been all my life? So I'm saying <laughs> the yeah. power of collaboration. Indeed. The power See, see, this is where people get in trouble. Mm -hmm. You you weren't put on this earth to compete. When I try to compete, competition kills creativity because Indeed. I can never be like you because you're different. That's why they fingerprint you when you got, you know, different elements that had investigations. Mm -hmm. That's why they fingerprint you when you got a clearance because no one has a thumbprint like yours. Mm -hmm. So I don't compete mm -hmm. against anyone. So now I'm not threatened by your success. I'm not mm -hmm. threatened by your shine. I mm -hmm. want to learn from you. So stop competing except for the person in the mirror. And that mm -hmm. person, every day, you become incrementally better. Thank you so much for, for sharing all that. I think um, this just hit the nail on the head in the end towards because a lot of people feel insecure about who they are. And they would uh, guard their gates, but in a wrong sort of way. Uh, they would guard their gates and not let good things in, not let good people in also. So you you got you to gotta understand um, this whole concept in the right way. I read somewhere, when, when you succeed, don't build a higher wall, build a longer table. And I think that's what we need to do, not build a higher wall, build a longer table so more people can come and join you. And that sense of openness uh, you learn and absorb from the very best. What a fantastic conversation it's been. 42 minutes have flown by, Mr. Brinkley. Thank you so much. Parting words of wisdom for youngsters, especially across the world, people who are struggling with an identity crisis. I don't know who I am. Um, Simerji, then uh, Anthony, you've talked about mission and purpose. Those all sound very good things. How do I discover mine? Um, words of inspiration for young viewers, um, Anthony? I would say that the best opportunity for you, whatever you've gone through is historical, no mm -hmm. matter how painful it is. So allow yourself to feel what you've gone through. Allow mm -hmm. yourself, no matter what happened, uh, don't let what happened to you define you, let it develop you. And right. so for me, I would hide a lot of my stuff. That's why the name of my book I wrote was You Can't Run Away From You, A right. Young Man's Journey to Himself. Mm -hmm. So so take the time to evaluate the things that made you who you are, because the, the things that, that you went through are instructive to help form you. Instructive, mm -hmm. you, you're going through the crucible. The crucible is you put something in a fire and it burns off all the impurities. So embrace your crucible experience, because on the other end of your crucible is, is you coming out as pure gold. Mm -hmm. So don't run from, from your challenge. Embrace your challenge. And, and understand that greatness is not cultivated in a large group of people. There's going to be a handful of people around you, and those handfuls of people are going to be worth more than the masses combined. So get comfortable in your own self. Get comfortable mm -hmm. in what God has given you and embrace those, those, rel those relevant relationships and alignments that the universe gives you. And just know that um, I'm writing another book now called Lessons Learned Through the Storm because storms reveal it's, it reveals the strength of your anchor. Indeed. So a lot of times storms blow things away. It, mm -hmm. it disengages stuff that shouldn't have been attached. Some mm -hmm. of the things you're holding on to are comfortable, but they don't complement your life. So again, embrace the storm, ride the storm. And, 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 and like, like someone says, I am the storm. Mm -hmm. So be the thing <laughs> that's coming at you and take over. It has been my immense pleasure. Likewise, and honor sir. to remind your your, your listeners, that they are gifted, they are talented, and if you've told, the second worst lie in the world is what somebody tells you and you believe it. The worst mm -hmm. lie in the world is the lie you tell yourself. yourself. So change your narrative, change your vision, change your life. Peace and blessings to you.
Thank you so much. And for everybody out there, I urge you to go and subscribe to um, Anthony's YouTube channel. He puts out wonderful videos there. One of them is called Monday Motivation, if I'm not wrong. And um, great stuff there. Go check out his website and link up with him on social media. We'll leave all the uh, links in the description of this video. And in the end, um, I'll just, it just came to my mind with uh, what Anthony just said in this closing remarks. Uh, this Chinese proverb, which goes something like this. It's easy to wake someone up who's asleep right? That's easy. Just throw some cold water on them. <laughs> right? It's difficult to wake somebody up who's pretending to be asleep. So stop pretending that you are sleeping. Only then you will find out the wealth of information that you have around you to make a difference in the world and make an impact and be that tree which yields the fruits for others, right? That's what we're all here for. Once again, my brother, thank you so much. I give you a virtual hug. Take care of yourself. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here. All right. God bless. Thank you.